Welcome to the SCI chat room. On today's episode, we will be discussing mental health and well-being. It's important to know how to look after your mental health and well-being, most especially during these uncertain times. We have some experts with us today. They'll be shedding more light on the topic. My name is Margaret. I have with me here Curtis Shingi and Sitemi. Welcome to the chat room, Shingi. Hi, nice to see you guys. <laughs> Good to have you. Welcome to the chat room, Curtis. Hello, Margaret. Nice to see you too. Thank you very much for having me. Good to have you. Welcome to the chat room, Sitani. Thank you, Sister Margaret, and thanks for having me. Good to have you on board. Notice that some people are uncomfortable and afraid to talk about mental health, and that's because they have a negative perception of it. So thank you all for taking the time to join me today. I'll kick off today's discussion with Curtis. Today, Curtis will be talking to us about what mental health is, why is it important, what triggers poor mental health, signs and symptoms to look out for, and some of the support out there. Over to you now, Curtis. Thank you, Sister Margaret. Uh, my name is Curtis. I'm a registered mental health nurse, and uh, I've worked in mental health since 2003. So I'm going to talk to you about um, you know, what mental health is, and uh, the triggers, and uh, the support that's there. So what I thought I'd do first is uh, to uh, perhaps maybe define, uh, because mental health and mental illness are two words that are, you know, at times used interchangeably. So I thought I'd uh, perhaps maybe start off by uh, defining what mental illness is and then look at what uh, mental health is. So uh, the definition I've got for mental illness is, you know, it refers to a range of uh, mental health conditions or disorders. Uh, these uh, can affect your mood, your thinking, or your behavior. So the examples being depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, uh, eating disorders, and addictive behaviors. In terms of uh, what causes uh, mental illness, um, I mean, uh, we do not have a single cause for mental illness. Uh, you know, there are a variety of, uh, you know, causal factors, really. So one of the things, uh, you know, that they think uh, causes mental health is genetics. Uh, so they're saying that, uh, you know, um, mental illness tends to run in families, um, su suggesting that there is a genetic uh, component to that. Uh, so if you have a relative with a mental health uh, problem uh, such as autism, bipolar, or depression, uh, you're also susceptible to that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, biological factors, uh, you know, uh, brain chemistry uh, plays a major role in, ma in mental illness. Um, so changes in neurotransmitters. Uh, so these are chemical messengers within the brain, basically, uh, that are often associated with mental disorders as well. There's also environmental exposures. Uh, so, for instance, children prior to birth, if uh, you know they're ex exposed to substances, um, and uh, you know, for instance, if mom is taking drugs or drinking alcohol uh, before birth, you know, uh, or during pregnancy, as it were, um, the child is likely to you know develop uh, some form of uh, mental illness as well. Life experiences as well. Uh, stressful life experiences uh, we've experienced, uh, you know, may contribute to development of mental illness. Uh, so, for instance, uh, you know, enduring a traumatic event uh, can cause things like uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. In terms of symptoms, there are a very variety of symptoms, really. Um, I'll just go through some of the symptoms and appetite changes. Um, you know, you find that uh, perhaps maybe people are sleeping less, appetite reduces, uh, if there's any rapid weight gain or loss, you know, things to be looking out for. Mood changes as well. So deep sadness, uh, inability to enjoy or express yourself, indifference to situations, uh, feelings of hopelessness, um, you know, um, and uh, laughter at times, uh, which is inappropriate, uh, especially for you know, uh, maybe people suffering from schizophrenia and uh, thoughts of, you know, wanting to commit suicide. Um, so those are some of the things, withdrawal, you know, sitting alone, you know, doing nothing for long periods of time, you know, not, you know, doing the activities that you used to enjoy doing. 
Um, and then problems thinking as well, you know, inability to concentrate uh, or problems with your memory or logical thoughts and uh, speech. Um, and then, you know, fear, you know, excessive fear and uneasiness about, you know, situations, you know, people, you know, sometimes don't want to get out of the house. So back to, you know, the question, Margaret, about mental health. So what is mental health really? So mental health is the absence of, you know, all those things that, you know, we've spoken about just now, really. Uh, and it is everyone's business. Uh, and, um, you know, we all have times when we feel down or stressed or frightened. Yeah? Right. Mm -hmm. Most of this time, most of the time, you know, these feelings, they pass. But sometimes they develop into a more serious problem. And that uh, could happen to any of us, which is why it's important to, you know, to, 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 to look at this, really. So everyone is different. Uh, you, you may bounce back from a setback while somebody... So well, somebody else uh, might feel weighed down by, you know, this for a long time, which is where the problems, you know, start really. So your mental health doesn't stay the same. Um, uh, it can change as circumstances uh, also change. And um, we know that there's stigma attached to mental health problems and why it's important for us to be having this discussion, yeah. you know, moving forward as it were. And, um, but it's also healthy, you, you know, to say, you know, how you are feeling, you know, uh, which is the only way that, you know, we can, you know, improve our mental health as well. So, um, so being mentally healthy does, doesn't just mean that uh, you don't have a mental health problem. Um, you know, you could have some of the symptoms that I had, but, uh, you know, you could be mentally healthy. You know, for instance, you know, anxiety, uh, you know, if you've got an interview coming up, it's pretty normal to mm -hmm. feel anxious. But it's the extent yeah. to which, you know, that anxiety, uh, mm. you know, affects your day-to-day -day functioning. Yeah. So there are some things that, you know, are pretty much sort of normal, you know, that, uh, you know, if you've got them, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got, you know, a mental illness. Yeah. Um, so if you're mentally healthy, you're able to make uh, most of all, you're able to achieve most of your potential, as it were. So you're able to cope with life. And, uh, you know, you play a full part in your family, workplace, mm -hmm. community, and amongst friends as well. So you participate, you know, in, you know, in things that, uh, you know, improve your mental health as well. So what triggers poor mental health and what are some of the signs and symptoms to look out for? Yeah. So there are quite a variety of signs. Uh, so childhood abuse, trauma or neglect, uh, social isolation or loneliness experiencing discrimination or stigma, poverty, debt, uh, bereavement. Uh, we've seen people, you know, uh, coming in uh, after having been bereaved, uh, long-term stress, uh, having a long-term physical health condition, uh, losing your job. So quite a lot of things that, uh, you know, come to play in terms of, you know, what could affect, you know, your mental health. Drug and alcohol misuse as well, you know, is one of the, the issues. Thank you so much, Katins, for touching on a lot of things there. Mm. Um, I like the fact that you said we should speak up. Yes. We go to, and you did say some of them, genetics can be a cause of it. So if you're going through this because of your background genetically, then there's nothing to be ashamed of. So we shouldn't see mental health as something negative. We shouldn't be afraid to speak up when we are going through all these challenges. There is support out there. And thank you for touching on all these things, the signs to look out for. We should be able to speak up and know that people go through these at various stages in life is how you handle it. And because there is support out there as well, in the end, you can come out of it successfully. You don't have to stay there, but you, you sort of identify that this is where you are and then you're able to come out of it with the support out there. Thank you so yep. much. Yeah, back to yep. you. Now I'll talk about, uh, you know, the benefits of uh, good mental health, yeah? Uh, so, I mean, um, having looked at, uh, you know, what, you know, mental illness is, um, so the benefits of a good mental health, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, clarity in your thinking, you know, improved self-esteem, uh, better sleep, uh, looking at, you know, increased energy, yeah. stronger resilience, uh, you know, uh, we talking about, you know, reduced anxiety, you know, your mood, you know, talking about improved mood uh, and, you know, a sense of uh, calm and inner peace in yourself, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, and then with the reduced risk of depression as well. And your relationships as well, you know, they improve, you know, interpersonal relationships with people, you know, improve. And how do we get to, you know, improve our mental health as it were, you know, I suppose that's linked into that. You know, how do we do that? You know, I mean, you know, let's connect with people, you know, good relationships are important for your mental well-being. How do they help you? You know, they help you build a sense of belonging and self-worth. You know, it gives you an opportunity to share positive experiences, provides emotional support, and allows you to support others as well. And, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, you could try, you know, to help build, uh, you know, stronger, you know, closer relationships. For instance, you know, colleagues at work, you know, attending church, you know, uh, they are also, you know, befriending services, you know, that you can access, you know. And, uh, you know, just for instance, you know, if possible, taking each, time, each day, you know, to be with family, for example, trying, you know, a fixed time to eat dinner together, you know, that helps with your mental health as well. Arrange a day out with friends, you know, you haven't seen for a while. Yeah? Try switching off the TV and play a game with your children, friends or family, yeah? Have lunch with a colleague, for instance, you know, visit a friend or a family member, you know, who needs support or your company, you know, or you could volunteer. You know, there are lots of places that, uh, you know, need people to volunteer, you know. Um, so those are some of the things that, uh, you know, uh, you can, but they're saying that, uh, you know, we should avoid using technology or social media alone to build relationships. You know, let's maintain, you know, the physical relationships that we have. Yes, you know, it's important, you know, uh, the social media, but, you know, the physical relationships, you know, are quite key mm -hmm. in that regard. Yeah, that's important. We find ourselves in challenging times and for us to, to it's easy for us to stay at home and, and we are working from home as well. And also, yes. so these things you're talking about are very important to be able to Definitely. make the effort, engage with people, go out, yeah. it's lovely outside, go out for a quick <clears throat> walk and yeah. these things will, will help us. I like the fact of, that you also mentioned the sense of inner peace Yes. If we sort of we've lost that sense of inner peace or our inner peace, we should that should be a bell, something yes. ringing that we should be um, conscious and watch out for how good our mental health is. Thank yes. you. Back to you, Dan. Yes. Um, so the other thing, you know, being physically active, you know, um, you know, how does that help us, you know, with our mental health, you know, so it raises our self-esteem as well, you know. Um, you know, the, you know, chemicals that are re released, you know, within us, you know, when we, you know, do physical activity, so that, you know, increases, you know, our self-esteem, you know, helping you also helps you by, you know, setting goals or challenges, which, you know, you sort of uh, achieve. And, uh, you know, that gives you, you know, uh, something, you know, to uh, focus on, as it were. Yeah. And then uh, we also got, you know, learning new skills, you know, that can also help, you know, how does that, uh, you know, help with your mental health? You know, it boosts your self-confidence. Uh, again, you know, we look at, you know, raising self-esteem. Self-esteem is quite a key one, really, uh, with mental illness. Yeah. Uh, and it helps, you know, build a sense of purpose for yourself. Yeah? And, uh, you know, it helps you connect with others as well. And uh, if, even if you don't feel like, you know, you do not have enough time or may not have, you, or you may not need to learn new things. There are lots of different, uh, you know, ways to, you know, to bring learning into your life as it were, you know, I mean, you can do it online, you know, there's lots of things available there. Yeah? You could try, you know, cooking something new at home, uh, <laughs> you know, you download a recipe, you know, <laughs> uh, taking a new responsibility at work, such as maybe mentoring a junior staff member, you know, all those things, you know, they help, you know, bring, you know, a sense of, you know, uh, worthiness and, you know, improves your self-esteem as well. You know, doing some DIY projects, you know, for instance, you know, fixing a broken bicycle, you know, something small, you know, a garden gate, you know, something small in the house, you know, a door hinge or something, you know, and then you build it into bigger things. You know, the fact that you've achieved it, you know, can only steer you to do more as well, yeah? You can sign up for a course at a local college, mm -hmm. uh, you know, try a new language, you know, practical skills, like plumbing. Um, and then, you know, also giving to others as well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so there's lots of information in terms of research, really, which suggests that uh, acts of giving and kindness can help improve your well-being. Yeah? 
So you're creating uh, positive feelings and a sense of reward. Uh, also gives you a feeling of purpose and self-worth. Yeah. So it could be small acts of kindness, you know, to other people or larger ones like volunteering in your local community. Mm. Yeah. And um, I mean, small things, saying thank you to somebody for something that they've done for you, just appreciating. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Asking friends and family or colleagues, you know, how they are and really listening to their answer. You know, if I ask you, Margaret, how are you? You know, and you tell me you're fine. You know, what do you really mean? You know, do we really, do we really, you know, dig deep and find out what, what that means? You know, spending time with friends or relatives who need our company, uh, offering to help somebody, uh, you know, with DIY or, you know, any, you know, work related project. Could be your neighbor, you know, could be a friend, family member, anyone, you know, yeah. you know helping out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Self esteem is quite important, and you've touched on a lot of things out there. Mm -hmm. At times when we sort of look outside ourselves and look to help others, we achieve some sort of self-esteem or we are encouraged in ways that doing things for yourself won't. So I really mm -hmm. like the fact that you mentioned so many things about going out there. Giving as well is one thing that can boost our self-esteem. That's quite encouraging. Giving would help you with your <laughs> mental health. So give, keep giving, <laughs> it's important. Thank yeah. you so much, Curtis. Back to yeah. you. Yes. So, um, so in terms of uh, services out there, yeah, uh, you know, what can we do? You know, uh, I mean, if we've identified that uh, any of our friends, relatives, colleagues, you know, or neighbors, you know, have any of these, you know, things that we talked about, you know, that we are concerned about, or if you're personally concerned, first point of call I would suggest is your GP. Um, your GP can signpost you to a variety of services. Um, so your GP should always be your first point of contact, really. Um, I think most of all of us will be registered with GPs. And mm -hmm. uh, if you are able to have that conversation with your GP, yeah, you know, they can refer you to various agencies. There's also an organization called Mind. Um, what a website address for them. So which is www.mind.org.uk. There's quite a lot of uh, useful resources in there as well, you know, for various aspects of mental health, mental illness as well. If you wanted to talk to somebody, uh, there's a service also called Time to Talk. Um, so you can just Google them, you know, you can self-refer yourself mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, there'll always be somebody there to talk to you, depending on whatever issues, you know, you have. Uh, we've also got Relate, uh, so it's www.relate.org.uk. So this is to deal with the relationship counseling. So if there are any relationship issues, you know, you do have counselors there that can, you know, help you. You've also got Cruise Bereavement Counseling. And uh, again, you know, they've got a website, www.cruise.org.uk. Um, if you're bereaved and, you know, you need some bereavement counseling, that's the people to go to as well. And again, you know, you can also, you know, go to your local uh, NHS website. Uh, I mean, they vary regionally, uh, but if you go to your local one, um, you'll be able to access the local services uh, re relating to mental health issues. Thank you so much, Curtis. There is a lot of support out there, definitely. There is a lot of support out there. So if you're going through this, don't be left alone. Please know that these services that Curtis have mentioned are based in the UK mind and all these um, websites are UK based um, organizations. So reach out to them and they will be able to support you. Thank you so much. Thank you. have yes. covered a lot, a lot on there from mm. beginning. Why is it important? Um, mm. Our mental health um, is important. You've spoken about the fact that's important. So yeah, there you have it. Our mental health is so important. And so we should make every effort to take care of ourselves mentally. We should go out there doing things for people that will make us happy. And when we are happy, hormones or some whatever chemicals or whatever it is are released. And that will sort of help our mental health. So we should go out there, give, be out there. We should also be vigilant as well, because it's not just about us. It's about the community. We find ourselves in the people around us. So we should be vigilant and know that when, we, so that when people are going through these challenges, we'll be able to pick up and also point them in the right direction. If you're facing these challenges or you know someone who is going through it, don't suffer in silence. Curtis has just mentioned so many 
resources out there, reach out to them and they will be able to support you. Or you can speak to counselors, your pastors, speak to GP like he's mentioned, but if you're not comfortable going that way and you want spiritual help as well, pastors, counselors in church can also help you in this aspect as well. If you have just joined the conversation, this is the SCI chat room. And today we are looking at how we can take care of our mental health and general well-being, especially in these challenging times. Stay with us. I'm sure you will learn a thing or two. Okay, so I will come to you, Shingi, from a biblical perspective. What does the Bible say about anxiety and why is it important to trust God's word concerning anxiety? Thank you, Margaret. It was so interesting listening to Curtis because a lot of the things that he was saying, even though they were based on science, the Bible also talks about them as well. Awesome. The Bible talks about inner peace. The Bible talks about remaining active. The Bible talks about giving. So it's just interesting that a bit of science and, um, you know, it also ties in with the biblical aspect as well. Um, when our pastor was preaching about anxiety, he touched on the foundational scripture, which is Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, and if you don't mind, I'll just read it out quickly. And it says, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, continue to make your requests known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will stand guard over your minds in Christ Jesus. Um, I think that scripture is so fantastic in that um, God understands that we will go through challenges in life. And especially with the current global climate and everything that's happening, people are losing jobs. It is so easy for us to be anxious. But God's word is, te God's word is telling us not to be anxious for anything. And that is really difficult to do because it's asking us to change our mindset mm. and it's about us as Christians learning to trust in God and believe in his word and sometimes when you become anxious you become fearful mm. and fear can be so paralyzing and it freezes you and you feel you can't function and you can't do anything but then it's about recognizing that sometimes with these situations we need the peace of God and the way for us to um, obtain the peace of God is by reading his word and acknowledging his word out loud. So, for example, if you are feeling fearful, speak out the word of God. For there is scripture that deals with every situation. So there's a scripture that says something. We do not have a spirit of fear or timidity. If we are feeling happy, there's scriptures about feeling joyful. If we are facing battles, there's, there's scriptures about dealing with battle and spiritual warfare. So I think the most important thing is to acknowledge that we can't do everything but our own strength, but also leaning on the word of God and holding on to his peace. And just renewing your mind all the time through the word of God. As mentioned before, that mental health or feeling anxious is not something to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. There's so many characters in the Bible that faced fear. There is Joseph, there is David, even Jesus himself before he went to the cross. He had some anxiety, but they all went to God. So it's just about understanding that we can't do anything in our own strength, but it is God that takes care of all things for us. Thank you so much, Shinge. Powerful. We all experience fear. As long as fear does not cause you to be stagnant, then it's okay. Go back to God and ask him to help you. I also like the fact that you touched on knowledge. The scripture says we should be anxious for nothing. But if you don't know the word of God, which says be anxious for nothing, then when you find yourself in challenging situations, you tend to be anxious. It sort of ties in in what Katie said as well. He gave us so many websites, so much information. And also being knowledgeable, getting this information, going out there to read about these things will help us. Thank you so much, Shingo. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging to know that what he said, although it wasn't, it was from an, a different perspective, the Bible says the same thing. And we know that we are on course and the Bible is relevant in this season. The word mm -hmm. of God is relevant now. And so we can live by it. And the next question I want us to talk about, I'll be coming to you now, Mrs. Davengo Siteni. So our world has changed so much. How can we optimize our mental health during these challenging times? Okay, um, right. My name is uh, Sitani. I'm a mental health uh, professional. I and I worked for. I've worked in this field for just over ten uh, over ten years. So working in this. Uh, uh, Phil has given me an opportunity to work with some very great people, and I'm grateful to God uh, for that. 
and thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity. Yet, uh, today I'm going to be uh, looking at uh, how to optimize our health, uh, our well being during uh, lockdown. Right. Um, my colleague has already uh, said quite a lot of things which may uh, overlap with what, I've, with what I am going to uh, say. And like you truly say, uh, Sister Margaret, these are very uh, trying times. They are very testing times, very difficult uh, times. Right. I know we are talking about uh, lockdown now, and some people might think that, well, we are out of lockdown. Mm. Uh, well, I'm aware that most of the country and, you know, other parts of the world are slowly easing out of the mm. uh, lockdown. But as we all know, you know, this corona uh, pandemic has affected different parts of, uh, of our country and various other countries, you know, at different stages. Mm. And it's such the lockdowns are being eased at, uh, at varying stages uh, as well. There are people who are still quite entrenched, you know, in the full uh, lockdown. And as we know, through our scientists as well, through social media and our governments, there are spikes as well of the virus coming up, you know, time and again. And these are also happening at, uh, at different times. Okay, uh, this in itself, you know, going in and out can be quite uh, daunting and cause a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. among uh, people. I mean, my colleague has already spoken about uh, anxiety and how that, you know, excessive anxiety can be uh, a symptom of, uh, of mental illness. Yes, a small uh, amount of anxiety is fine because everybody else does have, uh, everyone does have anxiety from time to time, you know, like going for an interview, you will have that bit of anxiety. But then when it becomes uh, excessive, then it becomes a sign of, uh, of, mental, uh, of mental illness. So uh, I am going to look at uh, three things, uh, especially, sorry, four particular aspects of, on how we can actually look after uh, our mental health uh, during uh, this, uh, this period. Right, as my colleague has already stated, you know, our mental health uh, is uh, important. It is as important as uh, physical health. A lot of people, as uh, Sister Margaret uh, has said, you know, there are a lot of myths about um, mental health and a lot of, uh, of stigma, and a lot of people will try not to, you know, be associated with uh, mental health, and they will try and, uh, and hide that. But then, unfortunately, doing that uh, is not uh, really helping yourself uh, at all. Uh, it is ever so important now, especially during these traumatic uh, times, to look after our mental health. As we've already had, you know, going through traumatic uh, experiences is one of those uh, causes of, uh, of, mental, of mental illness. And uh, as we are all aware, you know, all this trauma uh, of the uncertainty, the trauma of not knowing what is going to happen uh, tomorrow, the trauma of not knowing whether we are going to get that, uh, the illness uh, or not. So this is all, you know, uh, playing a havoc with our, you know, it's playing havoc with our mental, uh, mental health. Uh, there is uh, a saying we say, health does not always come from uh, medicine. Most of the time it comes from peace of mind, mm. it comes from peace in the heart, it comes from peace in the soul, and it comes from laughter and love. So there mm. are a few things that we can actually do to try and achieve mm. that peace of mind, to try and achieve that peace in the heart, that peace in the soul, and you know, to go back, you know, think about the old times, you know, when things were, were still very good, you know, when we didn't have this much worry about, oh, the pandemic, or oh, do I have a mask? Uh, do I have my gel? You know, <laughs> you know and, things, uh, and things like that. So if we can go back, you know, dig deep within ourselves and think about, you know, those memories, you know, think about something nice, in, in, you know, from way back, something that can cause you laughter. And that I'm going to look at is, uh, you know, the importance of getting enough sleep. I know that people say, oh, this is quite obvious. Yes, it is obvious, but how many people do get good quality rest for seven to eight hours a night? 
not a lot of people manage that. I know I'm guilty of that at times uh, as well. But then everything is about uh, planning, putting mm -hmm. uh, a plan uh, in place, just like you have to make an effort to be on time for work. You need to set a healthy uh, sleep pattern. Make sure you plan to go to bed uh, at a certain time and try and stick to it uh, as well. It's no good, uh, you know, sleeping at eight uh, on Monday and then come Tuesday, you are now, you decide, oh, okay, Tuesday I'll sleep at seven mm -hmm. or Tuesday I'll sleep at 10. Uh, and then the following uh, night, you are now, you have moved now to, to sleeping at, uh, at midnight. So that does, you know, play havoc with the, uh, with the sleep uh, pattern. You are going to sleep all right. You might be able to sleep just maybe two hours, but then that's not quality sleep. And this is going to impact on everything else, you know, the, uh, the following day. So you really need to get that um, good quality uh, sleep. Mm. Uh, this involves proper, you know, sleep, uh, sleep hygiene. So you need to wind down at the right times. Mm. Be mindful of your thought patterns. I've already had my colleague talk about you know, uh, too much uh, excessive thinking, you know, as part of, you know, so, or some of those uh, symptoms of, uh, of mental illness. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to start ruminating about things. I know the times are quite trying, mm -hmm. the times are very difficult, but then worrying about the times does not actually, you know, equate to solving mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. It can only, you know, make the problem uh, even worse. Mm -hmm. So try to be mindful about, you know, try and avoid those worrying thoughts. I know it may not be very difficult, mm -hmm. you know, but don't worry. Try not to worry about things that you have no control over. Mm -hmm. right? We know the virus is out there. But then if we start worrying about it, we are not solving anything mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So one thing that can help here is, you know, trying some uh, mindful you know, uh, activities. There are mindful apps uh, out there that you can uh, try. Uh, also, trying to, uh, try to avoid any caffeinated uh, drinks, especially just before bedtime. You know, this is just um, good sleep, uh, good sleep hygiene. Avoid bright lights. You know, everyone is uh, so involved with their little gadgets. You know, <laughs> mom is there um, with the tablet. Uh, dad is there with his uh, very expensive iPhone. The children are also busy with their uh, tablets as well. So this does really play uh, havoc with the uh, with the sleep. So if we can try and you know have time for the gadgets, you know, and try and make sure that you know at least it's not an hour is not two hours before mm -hmm. sleep time. At least have some winding down uh, time before uh, before sleep. And nutrition uh, is another mm -hmm. uh, big one, right? Just as important as sleep, what you eat uh, mm -hmm. is the energy. It is the fuel to your body, right? So what are you uh, fueling your body with? That is ever so important. So do not mal malnourish yourself because that is going to rob you of the uh, in relevant energy that your body ever uh, so needs for you to start uh, thinking and making those plans, planning what to do the following day, uh, planning, you know, what's the next move, you know, planning uh, your children's day uh, and all that. Because if you don't have that energy, that is going to impact on your mood, it's going to impact on a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And we had, you know, the importance of, you know, keeping those relations, you know, yeah. working, mm -hmm. especially during this time uh, as mm -hmm. well. We need uh, each other. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that we are nourishing our bodies with the uh, right fuel. So do not... Uh, overindulge in high fat and high sugary foods. I mean, we know that everyone does like a bit of sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone does like a bit of fat. We do like to have our takeaways and all that, but then everything really is about a balance. Mm -hmm. How do we balance that? Yeah. So we need to try and make our food our medicine or we'll end up eating medication for mm -hmm. our food. Wow. 
-hmm. So try and incorporate a diet rich in vegetables and uh, whole foods. And most importantly, uh, please keep well hydrated. A lot of people don't drink water, so water is life. So people need to make sure the recommendation is at least two liters uh, a day. Right, that may include maybe some of the uh, drinks that you have. If you drink some uh, not so strong teas and all that, but at least try and have, you know, keep uh, well hydrated. Exercise has already been mentioned by uh, my colleague. I can never uh, overemphasize uh, the importance uh, of that because when people start isolating and staying at home and not wanting to go anywhere, that already is, you know, alarm bells because that's one of the symptoms of, uh, of mental uh, illness, not, you know, wanting to go anywhere and not having uh, enjoyment, you know, things that maybe you used to enjoy. We know by its nature, lockdown means that you have to be at home, mm -hmm. but then, we do have, you know, those times when we can actually go out uh, and exercise. So the recommendation um, is 150 minutes uh, of moderate uh, exercise a week. This equates to about five to five days of 30 minutes uh, walk. I'm sure if you can do more, then uh, go for it. But if you can manage just up to 150 minutes uh, a week, really that will uh, suffice. And then there's also, I mean, we do get uh, quite busy uh, at home mm -hmm. at a time, you get busy at home than you do at work. And now that uh, some of us may be at home uh, all the time, that actually means that we are not even having any break at all, at mm -hmm. all. And that is so crucial, it's ever so important and this is all about how we manage uh, our time, right? Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we have uh, a routine, have a structure, you know, uh, in our day where we know that we've got uh, the time for the children, you have the time for your own uh, personal care, you have the time, you know, for, uh, for cooking and all that. So this rest time uh, is purely for you as an individual. Right, and try not to bow down to any external pressures. At times, it's very important to even turn off the phone so that uh, not mm -hmm. even your friends can contact you uh, during that time. Mm -hmm. You can uh, use this time, sorry, you, you can use this time to, you know, to indulge in uh, personal growth, uh, maybe activities, such as uh, maybe reading, you could read uh, an inspirational uh, book, and some people may decide that this is the time maybe they go to their Bible for spiritual people. Mm -hmm. They will go to their Bible, and this is the time they will you know, have time you know, with their God. So it's just between them and their God and nobody else. So really try and be very stingy about this time. It mm -hmm. is your time and mm -hmm. it shouldn't be for anybody. And this is your time to recharge your, bi your batteries. You know, everyone gets tired at the end of the day. So this is your time and uh, just try and be that uh, protective uh, of that time. Okay, now that we spend so much time, you know, by virtue of the, uh, of the lockdown, mm -hmm. we are having to spend so much time uh, at home. It's so easy to fall into, you know, slip into bad habits of not really attending to our personal hygiene at the time that we should be, you know, spending the time in our pajamas, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> <laughs> not um, attending to our grooming uh, and all. That is ever so important. We've already heard about, you know, the feel-good hormones, it you, know, feeling, you know, keeping up your self-image so that you really, you know, look like the same person, you know, anybody coming into the house should think, oh, okay, is this person going to a show? Is this person about to go to work? Mm -hmm. You know, just tidy up and get into, you know, something nice, something comfortable, right? And that helps, you know, with the feel-good, uh, you know, the feel-good uh, hormones, the endorphins, 
It also helps, you know, with boosting the serotonin uh, levels, right? Uh, serotonin, uh, this is the key hormone which stabilizes our mood. And it does have uh, a direct impact on our sleep uh, as well and also on our digestion. So, you know, the whole thing can be a roller coaster if we start, you know, uh, failing on one of, you know, on one of these, right? I know that people are different and this is not um, a prescription uh, for anyone. Mm -hmm. So people can adjust, people can do, you know, they can change this to how it really, uh, it, it really it suits them. It is not uh, a one size uh, fits all. Yeah, thank you so much, Mrs. D, for taking us back to basics. These are, these are habits that when we incorporate in our day-to-day activities, they will help us. They'll boost, our, they'll boost our mental health, mental well-being. When you're talking about sleep, I was sort of feeling a bit guilty because I go to bed at weird times that days I'm going to bed at 2 a.m. And so that yeah. eight hour a day, I don't tend to get it. And the bit about, I, I, I enjoy my company. So I sort of tend to be on my own for a long time, text people, mm -hmm. call people, and I sort of think I have sort of engaged with them that, it's good that mm -hmm. both of you have mentioned that it's good for us to go out there, mm -hmm. meet them, socialize, go for walks with them, go for conversations with them. And it mm -hmm. makes a difference. I'm not home, I'm, I'm at my uncle's place. And it makes so much of a difference. Seeing mm -hmm. your family, mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. to them actually makes so much of a difference. So thank you so much. Thank okay. you. I just want to add a, a personal testimony of something that happened to me based on personal care, but this was uh, before coronavirus, but it's when I realized how important personal care is. Uh, my two daughters were very young. I was a new parent myself, but between running the house, working full time, I got to a point where I had severe burnout. Mm -hmm. And I was in a state mm -hmm. of anxiety. I had no time to myself. I had no time to breathe. I had no time to enjoy anything. Life was just full on 24 seven. And I remember there was one time when I was cooking and it was literally the simple task of cooking a meal. I couldn't finish cooking the meal because my brain just froze. Mm -hmm. My brain just froze and I collapsed in the floor and I realized it was pure exhaustion. Mm -hmm. It took me a few years to realize what burnout and anxiety but i just wanted to touch on that personal care is so important mm -hmm. and just for people to really take it seriously and give yourself that time awesome thank you so much mm -hmm. Shinge. that's important you need to rest <laughs> rest 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 it'll help us think well thank mm -hmm. you we thank god that you've learned <laughs> and you're, you're taking this seriously <laughs> back to you now Sitemi. Okay, thanks for that uh, contribution, uh, both Sister Margaret and uh, Sister uh, Shinge. Right, I'm, I'm glad that we agree on, <laughs> on some of the things here. Okay, uh, the next point that I'm touching on uh, is uh, family connections. That's already been mentioned as well by my colleague, uh, Curtis. I cannot overemphasize the importance of this uh, as well. So what we do and uh, how and how we do that and with whom we interact with at home will form the greatest proportion of our interaction during uh, lockdown. And by nature of lockdown, it actually means that we are now stuck at home with our nuclear family, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we. So it's ever so important, you know, how we nurture uh, those uh, relationships, you know, how we talk to each other, how we uh, communicate, because how we are, you know, if we are not able to take care of ourselves, you know, personally, then it becomes very difficult to relate, you know, to, uh, to other people. So like I did say at the start that, you know, the four aspects that I'm looking at, they are all interlaced uh, in, the, in that way. So if you take good care of yourself and take good care of that, your personal care, it will be very easy for you to now relate uh, to, the, all the, to the people around, uh, around you. So we need to be able to make time. Right? If we make time for ourselves, we will be able to make time for other people. That's right. But if we are not able to make time for ourselves, how then will we be able to right. give of ourselves, right? Mm. 
So if we are struggling with our work balance, some people are working uh, from home. Uh, working from home needs a lot of uh, discipline uh, as well. Mm. So that also means, you know, having that structure, making sure that if it is work time, it is work time. It doesn't matter that uh, you, are, uh, you are at home. Yeah. So just uh, making sure that you are able to delineate between your work time whilst you are at home so that you will still have your time with your, uh, with your family, keeping those family connections uh, alive, keeping those relationships because they are still, you know, ever uh, ever so important so if we are feeling good about about ourselves it becomes easy you know to be around you know each other within our family circle we'll be able to make time you know for everyone earlier on we spoke about nutrition sleep and exercise so during uh lockdown everything is limited so naturally we spend um we are really having to spend so much time uh together we can actually try and make this time more enjoyable, right? Uh, Katie's mentioned, um, he mentioned some, uh, uh, if I remember very well, he mentioned, uh, you know, doing some uh, games, you know, family games. So that is ever so important, you know, uh, as, as a family, you know, that you have time, you know, where you can just sit down and, uh, you know, play games together, you can, uh, whether they are Xbox are games, whether they are, uh, they are board games, right? Before lockdown, because everything was just so busy, you know, people coming in and uh, going to work and, you know, hardly any time to actually even sit down for a meal. Uh, Text is spoken about, uh, you know, coming up with, uh, with a hobby, you know, mm -hmm. maybe as, uh, as a family. This is the time maybe to test out, you know, your talents uh, and all that. You know, in the end, you may not know that dad actually is the best cook in the house. <laughs> but then this is the time to actually try that out. <laughs> Let him try out a few recipes from, uh, you know, from YouTube. They put a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of res recipes there uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Okay, so you can take, you know, turns with, uh, with some of those. That does actually improve the family uh, relationships, right? Mm -hmm. It does help with uh, giving everybody, you know, just a bit of time, you know, to take time away, you know, from maybe cooking all the time, take time away, you know, from, uh, from, from other things uh, as well. And also, you know, there are some bright sides uh, as well, as much as, you know, it is a lockdown, it is a, a pandemic, just having that time together as a family is, uh, yeah. is ever, so, uh, ever so important. You know, some people, I'm sure you've bought your tables, uh, dining room table a long time ago, but it has never been used as a dining room table. It probably is used more often as um, like the <laughs> homework table. You know, <laughs> a homework table, it has become now a storage for things. You just dump things there and all that. So this is the time to actually sit down and, you know, enjoy meals uh, as, uh, as a family, right? Sit down, you know, meal time. This is the time to actually just talk as a family, you know, enjoy the meals uh, together. Um, Okay. Our social connections are very, are very important, but then unfortunately, due to uh, being locked down uh, as well, you may find that you do not have, you know, the usual time that you uh, you you would have had, you know, with your friends uh, previously. Okay, and even with your family, maybe you are on the other side uh, of, uh, of town but you still need to remain in touch, yeah, still remain in touch with your family and friends. It is, uh, it is important for you and it is important about them. Uh, you also need to think about, you know, friends that may not be coping so well uh, during this time. It shouldn't be just about, uh, just about you. It really should be about your, you know, your other people on the other side who are also, you know, very, uh, very important to you. Try and reach out uh, to them. Katie's mentioned, you know, when you call somebody to check in on them, when you say, how are you? Are you even listening? Mm -hmm. 
you know, yeah. when they say, <laughs> you know, I'm fine, right? Is the I'm fine, I'm fine, or I'm fine, you know? <laughs> and try and listen, hear oh. them, you know, hear what they are saying, and you should be, you should have that uh, ear to be able to discern if somebody is actually maybe not feeling so well, not feeling so good, you know, prompt them, you know, uh, what is it? You don't really sound, you know, yourself today. Is there anything that I can do to help, you know? At least help people talk, help people, you know, talk. They've got a, people have got a lot of anxieties, mm -hmm. like we said uh, earlier, you know, during this time. So try and te tease that out of them. Some people do not talk uh, much and they don't like uh, to say, you know, things that maybe are bothering them and they feel mm -hmm. that, oh, I'm burdening people and all that. So it should, the honor then should be on you to actually, you know, find out from them what exactly is, uh, is happening. During uh, these testing times, people have lost jobs. We've already had that. People have been furloughed and they are unsure about their future. And, um, a lot of people have suffered emotionally as a result, you know, mm. of these uh, job losses. However, you know, despite all this, I know that it's not easy uh, at all, but it is still important, you know, with all this that's happening, to still maintain, you know, our routine because our family needs, needs us. And if we start uh, breaking down, you know, we, we have to think about what's going to happen to our, you know, our children, the ones who are dependent uh, on us, right? When all this here is happening, the last thing you want is to start ruminating about your situation. We've already said that, you know, going over and over about, oh, the pandemic, oh, my job, and all that, it's not going to bring that job back is not going to help solve uh, the problem. This will only just lead to stress. Mm -hmm. And as we are all aware, stress leads to uh, depression. It leads to all sorts of you know, mental illness. So try and have a structure uh, in your day. Rethink your goals, right? It doesn't matter that, okay, two months ago or six months ago before the pandemic, maybe you were a top executive, you know, in your job and all that. Okay, that was your job. What we need to think about is the here and now. That's right. Okay, the here and now, we are here, we've got our families who are dependent on us. On us. Uh, so what next? Yeah. We have to start thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. right? Let's not just think about uh, the job, yes, you know, there is that money, the fellow money uh, and all that. But then what next? What now? So let's rethink, you know, our goals, small manageable goals. Don't try and overstretch yourself. Don't try and uh, come up with these big goals because that will lead to disappoint, uh, disappointment. So I have these small manageable, uh, you know, goals. They say, how do you eat, uh, there's a saying that, how do you eat uh, an elephant? Usually they say the answer is in small little chunks, right? Mm -hmm. An elephant is a very big animal, as we all very mm -hmm. huge, humongous. So the way to eat an ele elephant is just small little chunks. We are faced with this huge elephant out there, this pandemic I and all. So let's make our mm -hmm. goal small and manageable. And we'll be able to get, you know, over to the other side, you know, we will we'll be victorious uh, at the end. But try and break down the goal to, uh, to the small ones. Maybe this is the time, you know, um, maybe this is the time to think about that small home-based business. Mm -hmm. Like we said, don't overstretch yourself. There are lots of ideas on the internet, mm -hmm. but just be careful because there are also, as much as there are lots of ideas there, there are also lots of scammers out there. Mm -hmm. So do be careful, uh, you know, of the scammers. Talk to somebody. What is, uh, what can um, make the situation worse for yourself is not to talk to anyone especially uh, men, if you are going through any financial difficulties, you know, go to your friends, talk mm -hmm. to your friends, you know, 
talk to appropriate others. You can still talk to your uh, to your bank, mm. right? They they will help. They will you know give you a listening ear. The problem is people don't you know they are scared to take that first step. They already put barriers before they even start. So at least learn to, you know, leave your options open, leave your options open, talk, uh, talk to the bank. Mental health difficulties, um, you know, they are on the rise, you know, as a direct result of, you know, mm-hmm. financial pressures caused by pandemic, the lockdown and uh, all that. And men, uh, historically, uh, they are more sus- susceptible, you know, to taking their own lives when things get really difficult because by their nature, a lot of them don't really open up. They would rather just keep things to themselves. So do not carry this whole burden of responsibility on your shoulders. No one man is an island. Use every post, uh, positive and possible connection that uh, you have. Okay, so as Katie said, there is a lot of help uh, out there. Mm -hmm. If you are really struggling with mental health issues, uh, do go to the organizations that uh, he had mentioned. There is the MIND organization that he has already mentioned. There is also Samaritans. Yes, your GP is your first uh, port of uh, contact. Right, you also have your local church uh, as well. Connect with them and a lot of Mm -hmm. them are on social media platforms now. So do connect uh, with them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've touched on a lot of things that you've taken us to basics. And yeah, thank you so much. I'm not going to repeat all you've said, but I think one thing I want to reiterate is the fact that when you're going through challenges, don't carry the burden on your own. There is support out there. Mm-hmm. Share the burden and it will be a, a lot more lighter. Thank you so much, Mrs. D. Thank you. So I'll come back to you Thank now, you. Shingi. What advice, what final advice will you give to people, family members with friends dealing or friends dealing with anxiety? Um, I think most of the points have been touched on by Curtis and Zitani, but if you are a family member or a friend of someone dealing with mental issue, uh, mental illness, mental health or anxiety, I think the most important thing is not to judge. I think the most important thing is to take a step back and don't feel you have to solve everything. As mentioned before, there are lots of services out there where you can encourage your family member to go to. But the most important thing as well is to pray for them from a Christian perspective to pray for them and God also encourages us to be a good listener. Sometimes when someone is going through a difficult point in their life, it's so easy for us to want to fix everything. We want to go in with all the advice and talk to them. But sometimes the most important thing is being a listening ear as well. Being supportive, encourage them, let them go at their pace as well. As previously mentioned by the nurses that everyone is different, everyone's journey is is so different. There is no one size fits all approach, but it's about being aware of the services that are out there. It's about just being there when they need you. It's about that, how are you? Is it a really, how are you? Are you really in tune? Are you really listening to what they have to say? And above all, um, just being prayerful and taking it to God because at the end of the day, it's his peace that surpasses all understanding but it's just to make sure that we do not attach any stigma or judgment to mental health or mental health illness awesome thank you so much Shingi. don't judge and when we're speaking to people we're asking them how they are are we really listening yeah. i find that interesting because there was a time someone asked me how are you doing and i said oh i'm not too well um, um but i'm recovering they said oh oh glory be to god <laughs> This person is not listening at all. <laughs> I just said you I'm not well. <laughs> so yeah, we should listen. We should really, really listen. Really so, yeah. And not judge. Pray, support them in prayers. God is able. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. A special thank you to our experts. Curtis, thank you so much for taking the time to share so much with us on mental health. We're really grateful. I'm sure our viewers will be blessed as well. Thank you, Mrs. D, for sharing so much with us as well on mental health. I'm sure we, we will get you back here again at some point. Thank you so much. And thank you to my co-host, Shingi, for always mm-hmm. being here and for sharing with us on the biblical perspective of what, how to deal with anxiety. Thank you. It's been an awesome discussion. Thank you, everyone, once again. We've come to the end of today's discussion, and we trust you've learned something. 
We believe God is able to heal, deliver, and set us free supernaturally. But at times, he works through people. So if you are dealing with mental health issues, please do not suffer in silence. There is support out there. Also, if you know anyone going through these challenges, please reach out to them and support them. You heard what Shingi said. Don't judge them. Pray for them and point them to the right places where they can get help. Thank you for spending time with us today. You can connect with us on our website, solutionchapel.org. Until we come your way again, stay positive and take off your mental health. Bye for now. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>